Hello again, everyone. Velnish. Welcome to this part two of the video of the origin of my name, Ornish Glorentine Grandis. In the first video, I explained to you how I came to have the new name that I've got now, Ornish Glorentine Grandis from Clive Bernard Birch. Now today, I want to spend time to start to break down each name. And the first one I'm going to focus on today is Oynish. That's the first name, or Christian name. I'm going to focus today on Oynish. What Oynish means to me and then it will give you an understanding the origins of Oynish language or Jamaican Oynish language in the context of how oh, I'm explaining it from a personal experience while I develop the language. So, today I'll be focusing on Oynish. So, we've got Oynish, the first name. Or Christian name. Now, Oynish means feeder of the people. That is, Oynish means feeder of the people. Yes, Oynish means feeder of the people. Now, it's important to note there's a capital N in the middle. This is going to be important as we continue further into the development of Oynish, the language, or what's known as Jamaican Oynish language. Now, the N here in the middle is significant. So, my name is, my first name is Oynish. It means feeder of the people. But this works when you've got the capital N. You see, there's a second version of it. There is. In the second version of my name, you've got Oynish with a capital. Firstly, you've got Oynish with a capital N, but secondly, you've got Oynish with a common N or lowercase. Sometimes we say capital N or uppercase N or common N or lowercase N. So, Oynish means feeder of the people when used with a capital N when used with a common N it means condiment and this is where the food comes in now this is how Oynish the food starts because with a common N it goes now into the world of food and food preparation so with a common N it's a seasonal condiment oil etc
Right. So, Einish with a capital N means feeder of the people. But with a common N, it's still class as part of my name, but when it relates to food, no, food preparation, it's a seasonal condiment or salt or oil or anything that probably you get in the the NIST classification system in terms of in, in the trademark when it talks about class 29 when it talks about sauces relishes etc etc there's a list of stuff so I don't go through the entire list but what it does mean is it has to do with seasoning in general but condiments and what the condiments does and I'm talking about freshly prepared condiments, not the dry rub. I'm talking about things like wet stuff, like the sauce and marinade that's wet, not the dry stuff. It's mainly wet because then we are talking about fruit and veg. So it's a condiment or oil or so forth that in some way have a fruit or vegetable flavored in it because it's been prepared in it. When you put the condiment, either the sauce or the marinade or the oil, that have a fruit, fruit or vegetable on health promotion on any food item. So, for example, if you put it on a bread or incorporate it in the dough, if you put it on the fish, if you put it on the chicken or on the vegan product, or if there's a class of sauces that you use in desserts for making cakes, whatever the food may be, if there's a, there's a fruit or vegetable from a particular locality, once you put it into that food, it brings that food into the season of that locality. And that's the foundation of Oynish food. So, you have Oynish, the first name, which means feeder of the people. But in terms of the food, it goes into the seasoning aspect of stuff. The marinating process. And it starts with condiments, etc. And that condiment is prepared locally with a fruit or vegetable, depending on which country you are in. For example, I am in the UK and we're talking about seasonal fruit and vegetable now it's December December we're talking about a seasonal fruit or a seasonal vegetable that's that is on health promotion in the UK and I would imagine Republic of Ireland to be a part of the UK at one point so the sheer similar weather but mainly the UK because I'm in a geo geographical location so there's one fruit or one vegetable on health promotion in the condiment so now, for example, it's winter. In the UK, Brussels sprout is in season at the moment. So Brussels sprout is in the condiment, or it's in the oil, or it's in the salt, etc., etc. When you use that on chicken, the chicken now is brought into the season of winter. So it becomes a winter chicken recipe. In the world of Oynish, it's the condiment, it's the sauce, it's the seasoning that take preference over pre probably the meat. And I know like in some cuisine, you know, the, the type of meat cut or so is the significant of the recipe. But because in Oynish, the focus of Oynish is the health promotion of fruit and vegetable consumption. It's a special branch that I've developed that focuses on promotion of fruit and vegetable consumption that are in season of a particular locality. I'm not discouraging imported stuff. It still will happen. But the focus is to, to, to look at what's around you that's in season. Fruit or veg, that is. Be it the supermarket or by foraging, etc. You use that in season in food and that's why unlike jerk you sub, sub, subsequently can't have jerk bread or jerk rice there was a big uh, opera about having punchy jerk rice by Jamie Oliver and so forth however in the world of punch any food can be brought into season because the significant concept is that there is a fruit or vegetable need to go into health promotion in that area it is put into the food and bring that food into season for example Irish bread it's yeah, Brussels sprout is in season the Brussels sprout marinade itself go to make the dough that make the bread 
Thus, that bread now becomes a winter Brussels sprout bread. The bread is now brought into season. And this helps, for example, kids don't want it the raw vegetable, but if it's now included into the bread as part of a toast and so forth, big chunky bits of vegetable, but it's in the marinade form and it's spread throughout the bread uniformly, that bread is now brought into season of that locality, not from, from another country. And that's where the concept of Oynish comes from. So if a food is ever to be called Oynish, this is how it started. And it starts with me standing here explaining to you. Why? Because that's my name. Oynish means feeder of the people. And then I give you the actual food, Oynish. So what it means now, and this is significant because later on, and I'm not saying that especially when it comes to a trademark issue, and it, it should be noted that this name has been trademarked. For the UK, fine. So I would imagine um, people would want to trademark it elsewhere. I don't know. But what's significant with Oynish is, you see, because here I am sharing it on video. Because it's just how the world works. Someone will want to piggyback on what someone is doing. I am Oynish. I'm a chef. But even if I wasn't a chef, my entire life has been cooking. So my name literally is food, I mean feeder of the people. So when I said I'm doing Oynish food, it's not like I'm doing like uh, a KFC or, no, or something else, no. Oynish, I am being myself. Remember, in the first video, I explained to you how I came by the name Oynish Glorentine Grand. It's actually the connection with my nationality being Jamaican. Oh, even the passport or the depot from the UK established the fact that I am Oynish. But literally, because the name means feeder of the people, literally I am what I am. So this is not some just brand only, it's who I am. So when I talk about Oynish, the food, I'm literally giving you a part of myself. So even though I trademark the name Oynish, for food etc it's beyond the food itself it's a reflection of who i am so maybe for someone out there will be thinking about oh i'm going to do oinish the question is are you literally oinish i am literally oinish here's my passport i am oinish the jamaican or jamaican oinish so it's more than just Food itself, it's who I actually am, feeder of the people. So if you give to me something in season, I apply myself, I apply myself and give it back to you. That's my name. You give me Brussels sprout, I apply my skill. I give back to you bread. That's my name. You give me elderberry, I apply myself, I apply my essence, I apply who I am. I give you back elderberry cake. That's my name, Oynish. So it's important that at this early stage, people start to understand the concept that years down the road, someone doesn't come up from some strange ear and start to run away with some strange belief of what they think Oynish is. I am giving you of who I am now. But secondly, it's trademarked for Oynish in the UK. Later on, when we go further into the language, you start to realize that the entire language itself is copyrighted, copyrighted by who I am. I am Oynish. I'm literally writing Oynish the language. I am giving of myself. And you need to think about carefully if you want to go down that road to commercially take something of who I am without asking for permission. So it's important. And this is significant, especially for Jamaicans, who many of them work so hard coming up with a lot of 
artistic stuff and Jamaicans are like that. They come up with great ideas and in the Kingston area. I know many, some of them struggle, they have very well to people, but then you've got others who struggle, but they are very skilled in, in the entertaining industry and in dancing and they'll do a lot of hard work. And then you might have foreigners who take advantage of that because Jamaica is such a small population and these country with larger population will take these great ideas from the people who actually create this stuff run away with it and they make the money and the people who actually create the stuff are left behind and this is the injustice in the world that the people who actually create their own um, give to the world their own creativity to help build the world to make it a better place others just come without any regard so just before the language reach to in the future to some further development i'm explaining to you from an early stage my name is oinish i am the creator of oinish the food my name literally means feeder of the people and thus the food starts with the condiment and significantly i'm jamaican in which i'm a part of a culture where condiment is like the condiment capital of the world simply because jerk is such a big part of our world but the entire process of seasoning that idea of using a condiment to bring out the best in food and this is not new in any country most countries do it but for a small island like jamaica it's such a big part of us that it have a big impact on our on our world that innate ability i brought with me to the uk but i've diverged from jerk altogether and now I focus on Oinish. So I'm not doing like a, a branch of food from somewhere else. When I said I'm doing Oinish food, actually I'm giving you of myself because that's my name. Oinish is who I am, literally, feed of the people. And secondly, I'm a chef. So remember, Oinish, my first name, has, um, has um, two meanings. Firstly, with a capital N, it means feeder of the people. So that's who I am. As I say, you give me a seasonal fruit or vegetable on health promotion, apply my skills, and I give it back to you. That's my name. Literally, my name. And thus, the condiment itself becomes the means by which I use to promote healthy eating. I use it as a means of enabling others to eat more fruit and vegetable. It starts as that. In the next video, I'll explain to you the second name, Glorentine, and then how it is linked with Oilish, because then you'll see the significance as the language develops how Glorentine helps and also Grandy. So join me in the third video when I explain a little about glory in the team. Thank you.